I was born and raised in Gaza, and in 2010, I got a scholarship to study at the University of Oxford. Leaving Gaza seemed to be an impossible dream due to the Israeli iron clad blockade on the Gaza Strip. However, 14 years ago, exactly on this day, the Mavi Marmara ship and its brave crew, despite the massacre that Israel committed before the eyes of the world, laid the ground for a UN resolution that pressured both Egypt and Israel to open the borders, allowing me to leave from Gaza to Oxford. For this, I'm forever indebted to the bravery of the Mavi Marmara crew. We know there might be more effective ways to get aid into Gaza, and we recognize that this is but a ship in the ocean. But we also understand that beyond the massacres, Israel's long-standing policy aims to isolate the Palestinians from the rest of the world. During and after this genocide, we must force the breaking of the siege in Gaza and establish permanent physical links with the city and its people. Not only to provide a lifeline, a much needed lifeline to the Palestinians there, but also to prevent Israel from portraying Gaza and its people in a way that fits their genocidal goals. Moments like this and breakthroughs such as those of the Mavi Marmara and what we hope for the freedom of Fratella and Handola are more powerful than their face value. This is an act of resistance. Every mile this ship travels towards the shores of Gaza and every story we tell about our people in Gaza rips another page from the colonizer's trick book. Let's say it until Palestine is free. If we fail to bring them to justice, this monster that is nurtured by the word silence and publicity and funded by our tax money will not stop in Gaza or Rafah or Jabalia. It will kill the children in the West Bank. They are killing the children in the West Bank. They will displace the Palestinians in Jerusalem. They will flatten Beirut. They will cut the water off from Jordan. This monster will come after every one of us, knocking on every door, bringing blood and carnage. No matter what Israel does, to force us into misery and despair, we will embrace each other until the dust settles. We will look back on these times one day and celebrate the resilience of our people who are teaching us what it truly means to be alive. Let's always remember that we never ask God to spare us from misfortune. We only ask Him to spare us from despair. Thank you.